Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, Imperial Ding, with another propaganda cast for you, my viewers. And today we do have a one versus one on Stuart stuff. Yes, indeed, we are having Stuart stuff again. So recently, I'm getting a lot of matches on this map. Still, not so many maps fa replays on Eccleston or any of the other new maps, really. So please kindly do send those in if you do have some interesting fights on those, as I would like to f show some other matches besides those on Stuart stuff and Angleville. Stuart's off, no Stuart's off. Anyhow, Stuart's off being that small industrial town right in the middle of some thick forest. Could be French, could be German, could be Belgian, could be Dutch, I suppose. I can't say really, but interesting map. Not my favorite one though, because of all these buildings which do end up blocking lines of fire really much for the Wehrmacht, which of course means they can rather easily find themselves circumvented and of course exposed to heavy harassment which can be hard to deal with for example here because well there are so many buildings that just need to decap then run away and then of course it's a sort of tiresome game of cat and mouse a bit too much and you're going to have a very hard time establishing any sort of strong defenses at least that's what I find but anyhow let's go have a look at the two opponents in the northern corner we do have Mr. Abraham Lincoln apparently I'm going to guess it's not the one that was in the American War, but apparently someone had some parents who were very fond of him, and so named their child. So there we have Captain Abraham, or Abe, possibly not Honest Abe though, ready from the 28th Infantry Division, making their way towards Bretagne, possibly, and who shall be stopping them? It we shall be Mr. Rosenquiris, or Quiris? I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to pronounce that, but at least it's not anything filthy. At least I hope so, in which case if not, something very s terrible will happen to the sender. Anyhow, she so will be playing the Panzer Elite, probably some remains of an SS division trying to get out of the area and towards the more central German lines instead of being caught up in Festung Brest. We shall have to see what will happen there. And let us get started, shall we? And of course, a quick recap, of course, heavily, densely urbanized. Of course, buildings can be used, some of them at least, to set up machine gun positions. Can be certainly nice. Not entirely sure of how valid this building is, though. Could be interesting to do, though. Anyhow, of course, victory points on a straight line. Some high yield points right here in the east, the farthest away from both bases. There are some high yield munitions close though, but any fuel is right here. And of course, rather secured away by strategic points, so harassment can easily come through there. Panzerbrin is marching out, and we are seeing Gewehr 43 being equipped. And we have the usual standard barracks up from Mr. Abe of the 28th Infantry Division. We shall have to see how that will turn out. Plenty of Panzergrenadiers hitting the field though, Zen, nicely veteran, with their slight camouflage trousers and, and helmet, right. but not uniform, I suppose that would be for recognition purposes by Relic. Mission erfolgreich. Not entirely sure what's going on with the frame rate though. Seems to be awfully unstable. I shall investigate briefly in the action though, so do so. There we go, seems to have stabilized. Hooray! I do apologize for the interruption, I just don't like those dropping frame rates all of a sudden. Still not a single piece of action, the jeep is just maneuvering around, probably scouting about. In fact, let's go have a look at Mr. Abraham and see what he sees. Of course, note that jeeps and bikes do have a very large radius for scouting, and of course this can be used quite effectively to sort of scout out, well, where is my opponent and where isn't he? And of course, knowing where he isn't can be just as important, for example, for harassment purposes, or for, for example, spotting the kitten Pratt being on his own, which of course is a very nice target of opportunity. So things can be nice and of course as the fight progresses it can be really nice to know where he isn't so you can actually strike there for maximum effect and really force your opponent to really reroute his defenses and of course put him 
in a slightly disadvantageous position and let us remove the fog of war once more. But Phil, it would be nice to just sort of realize how good reconnaissance units can be in just showing what you normally can't see with regular infantry. Still not entirely sure what's going on with the frame rates though. It does bother me a bit. And we see a weapon support center going up. This is quite interesting. One infantry team, riflemen that is, two engineers, a jeep, and now going straight for the weapon support center. A bit unusual to see, actually. Normally I would have recommended at least two infantry teams, but there you go. And we see an infantry half track out from Mr. Wilson Keres, Hauptmann. So two panzer teams and an infantry half track versus one rifleman team and a jeep. Shall be interesting, and who shall be getting into this building first? And my goodness, frame rates up again. Not sure what's going on. One in, rifleman drops again. I'm not entirely sure why he didn't see, see into this building right away, and now instead he's pulling back, being pursued by Panzer Grenadiers of the unknown SS division, or could just be Panzer Grenadiers from some Panzer Grenadier division, perhaps 116th troops who have. Made their way off, perhaps indeed, yes, and are caught near Brest. Let us go for that, in fact. Doesn't always have to be SS, of course. They can just, of course, symbolize any sort of pantomime, yes, go on troops, or just any reconnaissance battalion that has been mechanized. Which is, of course, the fun bit about the Panzer Elite. Objective yeah, in Rifle fact, rather close dead. to such a unit. And we see a 30 caliber heavy machine gun on the way, a bit of manpower being floated here. And going for a second heavy machine gun, that's actually a bit curious. And of course can work alright on this, of course his opponents get a bit clever and get a mortar. Panthrin is flanking about, probably not aware of the heavy machine gun, but they certainly will be now. And will be rather, no, not quite exposed, but there you go. Hey, machine gun opening fire now on the half track, half track flanking, about rifleman flanking the Pantrineers once. So, keep joining in to support the heavy machine gun Pantrineers on the run. Getting gunned down a bit, might take some further losses, no. Now the infantry half track will be all that is left to hold the line, it will have to pull back though. A 30 caliber heavy machine gun can make short work of those. Not really meant to resist that though, I mean, basically there to get the Pantrineers forward to the field in decent protection and then support them. They weren't really meant as tanks or armored cars though. Although some were converted into a sort of half-track armored car actually, a bit interesting. And we see the 30 caliber setting up in a slightly nicer position right there behind the truck. Heavy oh dear Cat and Crab running straight through enemy lines enemy and unit. getting blown up most tragically after receiving a hailstorm of 30 caliber rounds right into the rear the driver did not make it to safety and we see the Pantagon is moving about in the east as well having secured in fact most of the map, the Americans are in a slight disadvantageous position, having perhaps gone a bit too heavily for the heavy machine guns. Now going for the supply yard, and we do see a mortar half track. Very nice job. It's only going to be provide some heavy fire support for those pants grenadiers and really blow away those heavy machine guns. Quite a nice vehicle, of course, a bit expensive on fuel, of course, you have to be careful with that. In particular, as it looks now that Mr. Abraham Lincoln will probably go into some armor cast. And from the half track backing right into the enemy position. I'm not entirely sure what's going on with him though. Not really the best of moves. The infantry half track really having taken quite a bit of damage. Engine is on fire and mortar rounds are beginning to fly among the American positions. Riflemen are awfully exposed, awfully wounded and low on men. They really will have to get out of there and not the mortar round. Could in fact take out the entire rifle team. Oh dear, retreat them, retreat them, honestly. But dishonest, I can't say yet. Heavy caliber machine gun providing a bit of firepower. Keeping back those pantheons will have to retreat though. Pull back at least away from all this incendiary goodness from the mortar half back. And another rifleman is down and finally he retreats it. 30 caliber setting up a bit out on the open road. Not perhaps the strongest position, but of course. Might do for now, but I really should consider getting out of there and all those mortar rounds home in on him. 
once more. And there you go, one of the reasons why you should be careful about having machine guns out in open territory versus units in heavy cover. In if they suppress your troops and out in the open will take a lot more fire and you can risk losing a heavy machine gun that way as heavy cover does provide a lot of protection from suppression. And we see a heavy machine gun team number two moving in. I'm not entirely sure that's a wise decision considering that more to halfback. More to halftime being a bit exposed, and my goodness, what's that support gunner for the heavy machine gun doing? He's running all the forward, leaving only one man left on that heavy machine gun team. Jeep running a bit forward, and Patchman is are suffering a huge of heavy machine gun fire, pinning them down. They are cowering under all of this heavy machine gun fire, but the motor is probably going to do its best. And of course, very nice movement, constantly shifting those heavy machine guns about instead of letting them become. Easy targets for the mortar. That's certainly a good move, a good move, but at the same time, his okay, lack of infantry, his lack of engineers in general, anything to actually seize territory is disconcerting me a bit since he's really giving up most of the map in the process. Panzergren is marching about in the east, coming under fire from the keep. The keep, though, might want to consider getting out of there since it's not in perhaps the strongest position. Americans marching towards the center might want to pull back those heavy machine guns in for a bit of reinforcement. And Panzergren is officially setting up a Panzer Jäger command and the repairing that infantry half tank. And we are seeing the Airborne Company. So we'll probably be seeing perhaps some safe runs or oh, Airborne calling. Quite interesting. The 28th calling upon the 101st Screaming Eagles for help. At the same time, I do believe we are seeing Scorched Earth for Mr. Bushin oh, no, is 116th as Clarence Abteilung. Shall be interesting to see how that goes. And Pantagon is asked to carry the central victory point once more. Very nice job from those Pantagon And we are seeing a large force moving in. Plenty of Gewehr 40 freeze in hand. Certainly are a lot more effective now. And you are going to probably see Panzer League commanders really using them a lot more. Of course, heavy machine guns can really do something about that. But again, you want to be careful not to use too many quickly and of course not have enough infantry on the field to actually help you. We must and of course as always I think perhaps the medics that you could have helped but of course you don't always have the resources or the mental agility to oversee that. But there you go, Rifle slowly advancing here, machine gun inching forwards, keeping up the pressure. This is really interesting, not a bad idea. Again, heavy machine guns can also be used on the offense again and have American heavy machine guns probably a bit more. Of course, light machine guns are much better for the purpose, of course, the German one really being rubbish out. But again, you can use it to suppress the defenders and then move your infantry forwards again. It can really work quite nicely, though. This heavy machine gun team will need to get out of there very quickly. No 